The clothing description, what we see at the scene, is consistent with what we knew him to last be, what was reported to us that he was last wearing when he disappeared. An active investigation in Powashi County. Here are the three things we know right now. A young person's remains were found near Lake Ponderosa. First responders say it was a grassy area. And we're told the family of Xavier Harrelson, the Montezuma boy reported missing last May, was notified today. Xavier Harrelson was last seen near his home at Spruce Village Trailer Park. That's in the northwest part of Montezuma. Three days later, nearly 400 volunteers searching for him around Diamond Lake Park. That's about one mile from his home. And today, law enforcement confirms a farmer found human remains consistent with what Xavier Harrelson was wearing here nearly six miles out of town. Local 5's John Diaz is live in Montezuma and that is Xavier Harrelson's hometown. John, what can you tell us tonight? Yeah, Samantha, investigators spent hours this afternoon and this evening processing those remains. They were discovered around 2 o'clock by a farmer who was working out in his field. And again, investigators confirming that those remains uh, are those of an adolescent who uh, was wearing clothes that match the description of what Xavier Harrelson was wearing when he went missing nearly four months ago. Now, investigators telling us that those remains had been out in that farmer's field for some time. Uh, th this was an area that investigators tell us they had not yet searched on foot. Uh, they may have gone over that area uh, by plane. And while there are obvious indications at this point that this could be the remains of Xavier Harrelson, investigators very clear that they are not yet ready to confirm that. We are not saying that it is Xavier Harrelson at this time. There's a lot of work yet to be done at the scene here. And then as you can imagine, um, the state medical examiner's office and state anthropologist has a lot of work left ahead of them in the days and weeks even to come. And this comes after four months of extensive searching for Xavier Harrelson, both on foot uh, and from the air. There has been an outpouring of support from the community tonight we spoke with a family friend and the woman who first reported Xavier missing. This has been an emotional night for her. There's not a time, anything that I do with my children that doesn't make me think of Xavier. From sitting them down at the dinner table and dishing their dinner plate to tucking them into bed at night. And as we mentioned, investigators did uh, speak with Xavier Harrelson's family. They tell us uh, that their mom obviously was crying uh, when she received the news. But again, they tell us that they did not confirm to her that these were Xavier's remains. And of course, there is a long road ahead in this investigation. They still have to confirm uh, who those remains belong to and, of course, how they got into that cornfield. For now, we are live in Montezuma. John Diaz, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. All right, John, thank you. And we are continuing our team coverage now on the remains found in Powashi County. Joining us this evening is Mark Bachman. Mark is a crime and safety expert with 35 years experience with federal and local law enforcement. He joins us from Florida. Mark, thank you for joining us this evening. What has been your experience with missing person cases, especially of Xavier's? Uh, cases like that instantly because of his age, they're they're taken very seriously. Obviously, they look into um, the child's history, whether the child was a runaway or not, along along those lines, um, the type of environment they were living, whatever. In this case, there was immediate uh, concern, um, and he was missing instantly. So, in in turn, that heightens everybody's awareness. There's a lot of communication between homicide people as well as missing person uh, investigators as well. Usually, when that type of activity occurs. Certainly. Uh, what are some of the challenges in these cases, especially before an autopsy is done? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, decomposition of a body is is uh, for that period of time um, is taken into consideration. And, and it's really tough sometimes to determine cause and manner of death. And so right now you have a crime scene out there. Um, and uh, it's it appears that it's it is Xavier and sadly it is. Uh, but now they're going to have to treat it like a crime scene. They're going to have to extensively uh, rope off, uh, quadrant off that area and look for any evidentiary uh, things of evidence and evidentiary value. 
This has been a case so touching, so deeply impactful on the community. What is the emotional impact of these missing person cases on the families? You know, I think it affects the entire community. Everybody has, you know, people that have children obviously take note of it right away. Uh, you know, their kids coming home from school, um, checking in, texting, making sure they're going to a, the location they're supposed to, those type of things. And it's imperative the parents do that, obviously. And of course, and it's a heightened awareness with neighbors looking out for one another. Mark, we do thank you for your time this evening. Just a heartbreaking day for so many folks. We thank you for your time. You're welcome. We want to get now to more details on the timeline of Xavier's disappearance. Xavier was last seen on May 27th in Montezuma. The next day, the FBI joined in the search. May 30th was Xavier's 11th birthday. He was still missing. On June 4th, the FBI created a website where the public started submitting tips and video surveillance. June 9th, a reward for information about his disappearance. Throughout the summer, several community prayer vigils and a 5 K run were all done in Xavier's honor. Our team is keeping you updated online throughout the night on this, so be sure to stay connected with us. The social media channels are there on your screen.